uh, to help it happen for everyone. Thank you. Someone involved in the software industry and a member of the Free Software Foundation, uh, I know there seems to be a great deal of conflict where I know you were talking several times about the importance of patents to the drug industry, whereas in the software industry, we are finding that the whole patent system is destroying innovation in the patent software industry. Do you have any suggestions on how one would resolve the seeming conflict in terms of trying to protect the drug company's innovations? Mm -hmm. while still allowing innovations in other fields without... Right. Parents. Right. The question is, how do you protect drug innovation, uh, basically, without the interference of patents? And, and frankly, the drug industry didn't need patents before we had these regulations. We operated without them because what made a difference to us was being first to the market. Whoever was first to the market with the new drug kept 80 to 90 percent of the customers, even when the second to market came along. So that was what was important. Well, it's still important. I, I don't want to say that it isn't. It is. But the problem is, if you don't have a patent, it doesn't matter if you're first to market because you won't be able to recover your costs. The costs are too high. Now, I didn't go into the numbers a whole lot because this isn't the kind of forum in which it's probably appropriate to do that. But what we're talking about is each new drug is costing $500 million out of pocket or a billion dollars uh, if you um, amortize it, so, or capitalize it as it's called. So, you know, the drug companies only have a prayer of recovering their costs if they have a monopoly for a short time. But they did, wouldn't need it if they didn't have to pay all those development costs. And since the development costs that they're paying don't help the American public, there's no reason they should pay them. It's crazy. We're, we're paying to kill ourselves is what we're doing. So that's the resolution I'd see in the pharmaceutical industry and probably every other industry too. There's been a couple studies done on this and the chemical industry and the pharmaceutical industry, both highly regulated industries, are the only ones I believe in which there's a, uh, an effect of patents that's positive. And the only reason I believe that, that effect is there is because of the regulation. Get rid of the regulations and you get rid of the need for patents. In fact, you won't want patents because <laughs> you'll want to just be first to market. That'll be the only thing that'll matter. Yes? Would you say there's a couple of pharmaceutical companies that benefit from that regulation? Sure. You know, as we saw in an early slide, uh, the question was, for those who didn't hear it, are the companies that benefit from these regulations? And the answer is, yes, the big companies benefit because the smaller companies have put out a business. You know, you can't take a billion dollar hit when at the last minute the FDA decides that they're not going to approve your drug unless you're big. So what's happening now in the industry is they're merging. Of course, as they merge, they lay people off, but they're merging and becoming a cartel. You know, basically the monopoly is, is, is starting. And it's become because the companies can't survive unless they merge. So that's what's happening there. Yes. Right, the, the question was, um, or the comment actually was that the court ruling um, for the Abigail Alliance only applies to the district in which it was, um, uh, that the court ruled, and of course that was the District of Columbia. Yeah, well, and of course that's where the FDA is, so that kind of takes care of the whole country is my understanding. Now, the effort's not dead. You can go to the abigailalliance.org site and they're still fighting, and, and that's wonderful, but when you don't have a constitutional right to save your own life by buying something that might help you. Uh, it, it seems that uh, it seems there are forces at work here that have nothing to do with reason. <laughs> yes? Okay, so maybe this is a question about those forces. Um, 
your, your argument is so persuasive <coughs> that I can't imagine that there aren't 10%, 25% of the Congressional House of Representatives that would listen to you and want a strong example of government fecklessness. And this is it. This is it in a very powerful way. Why, why aren't we hearing this from some impassioned representatives? Well, I think that uh, the question was, why aren't we hearing this kind of stuff from an impassioned representative when all this information is out there? And we are. I mean, that's why Ron Paul is sponsoring that bill. But you see, you have to think of the mentality of the bureaucrat, okay? So it's very easy for someone to come forward and say, oh, this drug hurt me. We need to do something about it to make it totally safe. And instead of saying to this person, drugs aren't totally safe. There are going to be problems. You know, you have to think before you take a drug. The FDA website actually, um, and I have a picture of this out in my Deadly Secrets uh, pamphlet or booklet out there on my table. You can see a picture of the FDA website where it says safe and effective drugs. Now we just got done talking about how no drug is safe and effective, yet that's what the FDA is promising. And I think Congress wants to uh, keep that image up because otherwise they're afraid people are going to say to them, oh, but I want it totally safe. Do something. Well, the only way to make sure that there's only Safe and effective drugs on the market is to make sure there are no drugs on the market. That's the only way to do it. And this is from somebody who's in the industry. Uh, behind you, you have a question. Yes. Uh, it's my understanding that the part of the Obama stimulus plan that calls for a government official to analyze whether your treatment is cost effective or not before you can receive it doesn't just apply to health care provided with tax money. It applies to That's my understanding. Uh, let me repeat that, though, for those who didn't hear it. Uh, she said her understanding of the Obama stimulus bill is this cost-effectiveness evaluation applies to everyone, not just people who are who has health care is paid for by tax money. And that's my understanding also, is that it's very broad. Um, I think, let's go over the side of the room. Um, this gentleman here. Okay. The, the question is, what, uh, what do I know about the health, uh, the electronic um, health information system and what will it have, effect will it have on small practices? Well, any regulation is going to hurt small businesses. That's just a given. Um, I don't know the details of that other than to say that when all of your information is electronic and it's in a database, which is what it's about, um, you know, then it's very easy for someone, either a hacker or your favorite government official to find out, for example, that you need a particular drug to stay alive. And I can't imagine that being anything but detrimental to our freedom. Uh, yes, in there. Um, you mentioned the eight patients being able to go overseas and get drugs, mm -hmm. but then it seems that there's this movement now overseas to crack down on regulation. Um, given these large pharmaceutical companies, given that some of these drugs were so, for so many years available elsewhere, Canada, Mexico, cheaper because of the regulations here, um, how has that shifted? Because it doesn't seem like there are going to be any places to get cheaper drugs anymore as things centralize. Right. The comment is, and the question is, you know, how is there going to be any place to get cheaper drugs or, or new drugs sooner? Uh, if they're going to harmonize, basically. And the answer is, there won't be. Uh, if this harmonization is successful, it will it'll really curtail our health. And we really won't have anywhere to go unless we're extremely rich. You can bribe someone or perhaps go to some Caribbean country which decides it's going to you know, be a free health state or something. But the problem